Hey guys, and welcome to today's idiot video. Today, we will be discussing M. Benz's third video in his series titled Ridiculously Easy Flat Earth Questions, and this one covers gravity. If you haven't watched my first two videos covering M. Benz's misunderstanding of the sun and curvature, I highly recommend you stop this video now and go watch those videos first. In his first two videos, M. Benz proved that he has no clue how to decipher observational reality and no idea how to read a science book. But M. Benz is a flat earther, and all flat earthers are fucking idiots. So let's begin. And I guess before we move forward with gravity, I should read the definition. I'll put it up on the screen somewhere per Google. Okay, I'll read it for you guys because I don't want to summarize or put my own spin on it and all you guys in the comment section goes, oh, you don't understand. You don't understand what you're talking about. Oh, you just don't know what you're talking about. In other words, you don't want to straw man the scientific understanding of gravitational attraction. This is kind of like when someone leads a sentence with the phrase, with all due respect, you know the next thing coming out of their mouth is going to be completely disrespectful. So when M. Benz leads with, because I don't want to summarize or put my own spin on it. It really means he's probably going to straw man the shit out of our understanding as to what gravity really is. Gravity. Now, that's right. The force that attracts a body toward the center of the earth or toward any other physical body having mass. For most purposes, Newton's law of gravity apply with minor modifications to take the general theory of relativity into account. Not many people are questioning M. Benz's ability to read. But reading words and deciphering their contextual meaning do not have the same connotation. Flat earthers can quote every scientific equation, postulate theory, and law by heart, but not a single one of them understands how to properly apply them in scientific situations. Because if they did understand scientific application, they wouldn't deny their validity. This is a direct consequence of the Dunning-Kruger effect. M. Benz, as well as all other flat earthers, have a very minimal understanding of the gravitational force, but still think they are capable enough to disprove its existence. But M. Benz, along with all other flat earthers, is an idiot. So, how I interpret that, and how most people, if you ask any old Joe off the streets, what does gravity mean and what does gravity do? Gravity is the reason why things fall. The reason why if you jump, you do not float, you cannot fly, the reason why you come back down towards the earth. Just as I said, M. Benz has a very elementary understanding of what gravity is. And yes, most laymen will give you an answer very similar to this. And while he isn't necessarily wrong here, he's not exactly right neither. As there is more to the gravitational force than just what he defines. I'm getting ready to work on a science video properly describing what gravity is and how exactly we know that it exists. Some of that will be covered in this video, but before we move forward, I would like to address the two publications listed on the screen. Gravitation and co-gravitation and electromagnetic retardation and theory of relativity were both written by Dr. Oleg Jefeminko. Dr. Jefeminko focused his studies on making the Newtonian concept of gravity account for Einstein's verified predictions regarding relativity. Dr. Jefeminko's theories are dependent upon the existence of the non-existent ether, which would replace the fabric of space-time if it were true. However, the above-mentioned Michelson-Morley experiment proved that there was no ether to be tested to begin with. I do find it funny, though, that flat earthers like M. Benz will disregard aspects of science that don't correlate to their world beliefs and push scientific views that do. M. Benz you do realize that while Dr. Oleg Jefeminko had some crazy theories about what gravity actually was, he did not think the world was flat, or that an accelerating force towards the center of mass did not exist. You are an idiot. Glow believers and flat earth believers all together can all agree on that one, right? I think we can all agree that that's what our general understanding of gravity is at this point. Is if you throw something in the air, it falls back down due to gravity. So while that is a decent definition of gravity, it's only very basic information and definitely not enough to debunk. 
Gravity is the accelerating force we use to describe mass attraction and is a consequence of how massive objects affect and move through the fabric of space-time. The more mass an object has, the more gravitational attraction it will have. You ask anyone why do masses of water stick to the, bo the bottom, sorry, the bottom, why do masses of water stick to the bottom of a spinning ball? They're gonna say due to gravity. That's typically the answer I get, right? This was actually the first flat earth argument I ever heard, and it opened my eyes to the dangers of the people pushing the flat earth agenda. The average person, or below average person in M. Benz's case, doesn't understand the different forces that are constantly present and how they affect massive objects. Now it's not necessarily their fault, because the average person just doesn't have a need to apply those calculations every day. Now if you want to know why the Earth can rotate at 1,000 miles per hour at the equator and still maintain its gravitational pull on masses of water, you must first understand that the centrifugal forces due to the rotation at the surface pales in comparison to the amount of force pulling on the water from the Earth. The following graphic shows the two calculations regarding the centrifugal force and the gravitational force exerted on a one kilogram bucket of water at the equator. The centrifugal force equation is F equals mv squared divided by r, where m is the mass of the object in kilograms, v is the tangential speed of the object on the rotating surface measured in meters per second, and r is the distance to the point of rotation measured in meters. Therefore, the centrifugal force is 1 kilogram times 447 squared meters per second divided by 6,371,000 meters to the center of the Earth, or 0.0313 newtons. The calculation for the force exerted on an object due to gravity is F equals MA, where M equals the mass of the object in kilograms, and A is the acceleration of the gravitational force. So at the equator, the force the Earth exerts on a 1 kilogram bucket of water due to gravitational attraction is 9.8 newtons. The force of gravity is more than 300 times stronger than the centrifugal force due to rotation. Let's test M. Benz's comprehension skills. M. Benz, if gravity is more than 300 times stronger than the centrifugal force, which force is going to be the dominant force? Gravity. <laughs> Let's take these two. Ordinary soda cans, right? Pepsi, regular Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, not sponsored. The only sponsorship that you are going to get is from the makers of protective headgear for the mentally challenged. Because all flat earthers are in danger of hurting themselves because all flat earthers are mentally challenged idiots. <laughs> um, regular Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, okay? Both 12 ounces of, li of carbonated liquid, same form factor, right? No different between the two. Okay, pretty much the same ingredients. I mean, I know one is made with high fructose corn syrup and one's made with aspartame. They have different sweeteners in them. But we can all agree that they're the same form factor. And aluminum cans, 12 ounces, same amount of liquid inside. We're gonna just test this theory of gravity, right? So if I drop these, I'm gonna drop these here, put a demonstration up. If you drop both of these cans, they're gonna fall back down Am I the only one out there that was hoping for a massive Pepsi product explosion painting that beautiful beige wall brown? Use this time to smash the like button three times for gravity, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment below what you were hoping would happen when M. Benz dropped those cans. If you use the hashtag M. Benz is an idiot, you will get a free ding. They're going to fall back down to the center of the mass. Can we all agree on that? Yes, M. Benz. We can all agree on that because that's fucking reality. They're going to fall back to the ground as if they were being pulled to the center of the earth by some magical force every single time. We in the real world call that force gravity. Flat earthers call that force electromagnetism, density, buoyancy, air pressure, direction of natural molecular vibrations, and my favorite one of all time, the theory of what goes up must come down. Flat earthers are fucking idiots. We can all agree that what I'm saying is pretty much accurate of, of a representation of what we call gravity and how things work here on our earth, right? Why must you ask for our validation that you're getting middle school science concepts correct? 
So far, you have represented gravity to the best of your uneducated ability. But if this video is anything like parts one and two, then I know you're gonna fuck it up real soon with this experiment you claim to have that supposedly disproves gravitational attraction. So let's continue. So, now, bringing my experiment together. So, that's for you, Frankie. Yeah. So, I have an ordinary pitcher of ordinary water. Like I said, if I drop this, it's heavy, right? It's gonna fall. If I just drop it in the air, it's gonna fall. If I put it in the water, this thing is dense, not light. If I put it in the water, as so, it's gonna sink to the bottom. Am I correct? I don't know, M. Benz. Why don't you look right in front of you, you fucking idiot? Obviously, it falls to the bottom of the pitcher. The better question to ask yourself is why does it sink to the bottom of the pitcher every time and not sometimes to the side and sometimes up? It would appear as if there's a direction of preference for the can to travel once you let it go. And don't give me that density buoyancy bullshit that all flat earthers parrot because the only way density and buoyancy works is if buoyancy provides a directional vector for the different densities to align themselves. Which force do you think is in the equation for buoyancy that offers densities a direction of organization? Gravity! Because of gravity. Gravity pulls it all the way down to the center of the mass. Obviously it can't go through the pitcher and the, and the table here, so it's not gonna go all the way to the ground, but it's going down to the center of the mass, right? So far, so good, Mbenz. If I didn't know any better, I would have thought you at least graduated high school. But something tells me M. Benz is about to fuck it all up. We tried that with a regular can of Pepsi. Again, same form factor, same liquid. The only difference is the aspartame and the high fructose corn syrup. Now, we have this ordinary can. As you guys see, Diet Pepsi, nothing crazy about it. I'm gonna drop this in the same container of water. Let's see what happens. What? That's not... Something ain't right. What's, what? Something is not right here. What happened to the gravity? Oh, M. Benz, you simple-minded idiot. What the fuck do you mean, what happened to the gravity? Do you not see that the can is almost completely submerged? What force do you think is pulling down on that can? Gravity! <laughs> so, we can all agree, going back, to refresh some of you guys who don't remember three minutes earlier in the video, gravity is supposed to pull things to the center of the mass. Again, drop these two cans. They both fell down to the ground. One did not float like this one. I put this can in the same water. It sank down to the bottom and stayed there because gravity, as we can all agree, is pulling it down, right? Yes. How do you not see that gravity is literally pulling that can down into the water? If there wasn't a force pulling down on that can to the center of mass, it would just float on top of the water. At this point, you are either being extremely intellectually dishonest, or you're a bona fide fucking idiot. Let's just ask Google, why does Diet Coke float? Regular soda contains sugar as a sweetener, the difference in the amount dissolved sweeteners leads to a difference in density. Cans of regular soda tend to be more dense than water, so they sink. Cans of diet soda are usually less dense than water, so they float. So sugar has a density of 1.59 grams per centimeter cubed, and aspartame has a density of 1.35 grams per centimeter cubed. So the regular Coke mixture combined with the can has a density that is greater than both water and the diet Coke mixture with its can. Because its density is greater than that of the water, the force pulling down on it will be greater than the force pulling down on the top of the water. It will continue to sink until the force pulling it down matches the force pushing it back up, or the buoyant force. As far as the Diet Coke can observation, Diet Coke has a density that is relatively close to that of water, which is why almost the whole Diet Coke can is submerged, but is not sinking. It doesn't sink due to the buoyant force meeting or exceeding the force of gravity pulling down on the diet soda can. Now that we have the scientific explanation, let's hear what the village idiot has to say. More dense and less dense. So they sink, the other one floats. Nowhere in there does it say gravity has an effect 
and that is the reason why the cans fall down. And you are a fucking idiot. Density is literally a descriptive value to express the ratio of mass to volume. Density itself would not explain why one can floats and the other sinks. You need a vector force like gravity to tell them in which direction they should float or sink. In fact, the formula for the buoyant force includes gravity in the equation and reads F equals PVG, where F equals the buoyant force measured in newtons, P equals the fluid density measured in kilograms per meter cubed, and V equals the submerged volume measured in cubic meters. M. Benz, can you guess what the G stands for? Gravity! So you can't say when I dropped the cans just in midair and they both fell that that was due to gravity. Yeah, okay, for shits and giggles, let's remove gravity from the equation. What force is it that causes the cans to fall to the ground then? According to Newton's first law of motion, objects at rest or at a constant velocity will remain at rest or in that constant velocity until a force acts upon them. M. Benz, can you think of a force that will accelerate the cans towards the Earth the moment you let them go? Gravity! Because if, if that's the case, then we should still be experiencing the same thing here. This can should be at the bottom of this picture and not be floating at the top right here. This can is experiencing the same thing as the other can, except that the density of the Diet Coke is less than the density of the regular Coke. You literally read this to everyone earlier in this video. If it wasn't for gravity, if it was just density, that can, ice cubes, and icebergs would all just sit on top of the water. None of them would be partially submerged, as there is nothing to pull down on them. Maybe your viewers are a bunch of dumbasses who fall for your ignorance, but my viewers are smart enough to know that you have no fucking clue what you're talking about, and you are a fucking idiot. Floating at the top, it should not happen, because gravity is the same thing when I dropped them in the air, they should both sink to the bottom. If you took the time out to understand forces like the buoyant force and gravity, you would understand the stupidity of what you just said. If a can of Diet Coke has less density than a can of regular Coke, but the same volume, then we can definitively say that the mass of the regular Coke is greater than that of the Diet Coke. Now let's pull out our force equation, F equals MA. Since A is the gravitational acceleration and is equal in both situations, we are left with a relationship of the force that an object exerts proportional to the mass of that object. In other words, the more massive regular Coke can, when acted upon by gravity, will exert a higher force than the less massive diet Coke can. For the final piece of the puzzle, we must acknowledge the pressure gradient in water that increases with depth. Since the Diet Coke can exerts less force downwards due to gravity, it will float further away from the point of gravitational attraction than the can of regular Coke. If you cannot agree on this, then you are just indoctrinated, you're saying things. Flat Earthers love to say that we are the ones who are indoctrinated. However, Flat Earthers hold beliefs that have absolutely zero evidence to back them and blindly deny absolutely acceptable scientific explanations of natural phenomena like buoyancy. They will make up their own bullshit explanations and wonder why we don't just accept their delusional fantasy as reality. Flat earthers, especially M. Benz, are fucking idiots. You, pro you guys probably, are you heliocentric enthusiasts, probably have a science.com copy and pasted answer ready to go down in my comment section for why we see this phenomenon right here. Other than the density of sugar and aspartame, I didn't have to look up any material to refute your claims. They were fairly elementary and seemed to me and probably most others to be mostly common sense. The only people who don't accept the scientific explanations are those who have an agenda that comports with their worldview. In other words, if gravity exists, then the flat earth is impossible. Therefore, flat earthers must be unconditionally blind to the possibility of gravity explaining anything. Flat earthers aren't known for their intellectual honesty, but flat earthers are fucking idiots. But the simple fact remains is that gravity is a theory it has not been proven, it cannot be replicated, it cannot be testable, repeatable, measurable, and observable. Gravitational attraction is a scientific law which holds more weight than a scientific theory, meaning gravity has been proven with accelerometers, it can be replicated by converting energy into mass, 
It has been tested, repeated, and observed with several experiments, most famously the Cavendish experiment. M. Benz, denying reality does not give validity to your fantasy, especially since you haven't offered a single piece of evidence to either explain what's wrong with gravity or explain what force is actually acting upon the cans. So when they tell you that masses of water are being stuck to the outside of a spinning pear hurtling through space due to gravity, you show them this video and you say, please explain this one to me. Well, let me ask you this. When someone offers you an explanation that perfectly describes what you are experiencing, will you actually accept it? I didn't think so, because you are a fucking idiot. So I think this is where we are going to stop the video today. M. Benz was doing so good right up to the point that he started denying gravity. He still offered no explanation for the force that causes the cans to sink towards the bottom. He clearly showed us that he thinks his limited understanding is enough to rewrite the buoyant force equations without using gravity. And finally, he showed the whole world that he is an uneducated, narcissistically delusional Dunning-Kruger idiot. Now I'd like to take the time out to thank M. Benz for making his third video in the series after being so abhorrently wrong in his first two videos. I am truly grateful that you continue making comedic gold, but I still think you're a fucking idiot. Okay, so I'd like to thank you again for sticking around. I truly appreciate all your support. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, and click the little notification bell so you can stay current with our content. I'm Father Skeptic, and I'm out.